So at the butcher shop, you know, everyone talks about different cuts of steak, what has the best fat, you go to steak houses. Nobody talks about chicken. I wanna know how old's that chicken? What breed is that chicken? What's that chicken's personality? So we're at Le Coq Rico, and we're gonna learn a thing from Chef Antoine Westerman. Let's go. I don't think most Americans have ever thought what type of chicken are they going to buy? You just go to a grocery store and you buy chicken. You know, when I came the first time to United States, I took two years to find the best chicken, not only in United States, but in the world. And here from New York, from the country around New York. I have five different kinds of chicken. I like Brunlandaise because uh, it's easy to, to eat it, it's uh, smooth. I think you have to start with them. Plymouth Rock, it could be the same family than Brunlandaise. The Plymouth Rock eat only grain like the Brunlandaise. Mm -hmm. okay. He is not always outside. These two are kind of the most, I would say of the five, the most similar to what you know you would expect to see in the grocery store. As more we go on, this is more wild, more rustic. This is the New Hampshire. This is more fat. Very different. The New Hampshire is always running, running, running. It also has the breastbone like a wild turkey. Look at that, that leg and thigh. And then you look at that one and it's like, yeah, that, this guy's been You understand, some immediately yeah. you yeah. see it. What is the very different with the New Hampshire and the Cornish? They eat not only grain, they eat all what they find outside. Could you say that these chickens are more similar to grass-fed beef and these are more similar to you are, you, beef? you are right. Here I have uh, the guinea full. It's more dark under the skin yeah. and the taste it's very strong. For me when I will have uh, the maximum of pleasure I will choose this. Really impressed by the, the length. You can just see like how big that thigh is. Yes, I fly from mo morning in, until night. You have the age of the chickens noted. Most chicken is what, 30, 40 days old? This is the problem. When the, the chicken is only uh, 30, 40, 50 days, the taste cannot be the same. I've never tried a chicken that's over probably six or eight weeks. I am a lucky man to, to, to give you the possibility. We're, to the, we're, yeah, we're, we're the lucky, lucky ones. We're very <laughs> excited. Let's cook some chicken. Cook some chickens? Yes. My way is to put the chicken in chicken stock with some vegetable and push it slowly during half an hour. After that, I put it in the oven and roast it. I've never heard of this technique and every like article I've ever read about like how to make the perfect chicken, no one ever says poach it first. It's easy to understand. Yeah. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> you have all the birds turning in here, getting that nice even flame. Then you're collecting the juice down here with some of the bones so we can make the, the perfect jus yes. from what we're getting down here. When it's roasted at the bottom of the casserole, it has to caramelize, caramelize. and oh, yeah. you have to put the water in it at exactly at the, right the, the right moment. Jus! Taste my jus. It's very strong. This is the Brunlandaise, yes. The lazy French one. Yes. How's the special chicken? How's the breast? Really tender. The fat is like creamy. Holy sh I mean, this is very comparable to, you know, a regular chicken, just much more elegant. Just so much better. Yeah. Do you like it? It's amazing. It's incredible. Sure. If you see like a white kind of like translucent fat, you know there's really not that much flavor there. And when you have this like really, really yellow, kind of like denser fat, is the richest leg meat I think I've ever had on chicken. Especially with, with the jus. You're right, the jus. What, what can I say? Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps we can, we can try the Jenny pig. This is the guinea. This is more dark now. Yeah. Right, but look at this thigh. Wow. It doesn't, even, it doesn't even look like a normal chicken. The leg is like smaller than any leg you've ever seen before. But look at the color on it. Whoa. I've never tasted anything like this before. 
like the texture feels like you're eating a turkey leg, but the flavor is so much more complex than any other chicken or turkey. Now we start with the big oven. I cook in this pot all together. Vegetable, uh, lemon confit, rosemary, uh, white wine, and chicken stock. 45 minutes in the oven and it's very different. But you will see, it's tasty. It's cooked covered. Was this one also poached first? No, rare. You get the thigh, I got the breast. Enough. We all get the juice. This is the wishbone. You gave it to me, man. Yes? I keep saying how rich it is, but I, like the potatoes are just as good as the chicken. It's all the, uh, the jus. It has so much flavor. Perhaps it's my favorite. I think so. Yeah, these are both two ways I've never done before. This is also a really interesting and fun way to eat. At a steakhouse, you get one steak. Yeah. And everybody tries the prime rib. It's one, uh, one thing, but being able to eat the legs and thighs, breasts, wings. In America, why do you think we don't have poultry houses? Because I was not an American. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if one day in my life I will see that uh, the customers go to the poultry house and to the beef house, then I can die with pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see more poultry houses around. New York is lucky to have you. I say one day I will forget my ticket for going back to Paris and I will still here, stay here. <laughs> for more episodes like this, click right here. Yeah! A different style of cooking of chorizo, all using open fire. Then we're going to be doing some uh, kind of Argentine style, more traditional uh, chorizo.